<clears throat> a monotone uh, increasing sequence. An. Uh, what does that mean? <clears throat> uh, it means that An is less than An plus one, which is less than An uh, plus two, and so on. <clears throat> uh, that is bounded above. <clears throat> is bounded above, <clears throat> meaning um, an uh, is less than m uh, for, uh, for some m um, and, um, and for all n. <clears throat> So if, if such a sequence um, is bounded above, then uh, it converges. Okay. Right, and uh, similarly, uh, if uh, <clears throat> an is uh, monotonically decreasing and uh, bounded below. So decreasing, increasing, above. Uh, then uh, it converges. <clears throat> Good. Let's prove this. <clears throat> Um, from last time, um, the uh, the set a n n bigger than zero <clears throat> uh, is bounded above um, so from last time, we proved the um, least upper bound principle. So by LUB, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, the supremum of S, we call it L, uh, is finite. <clears throat> it exists. Um, we'll show that I uh, want to show that uh, a n that the limit of uh, a n is uh, L. So that's what we we'll show. <clears throat> okay. So how do we do this? Uh, we will use the epsilon uh, definition. Um, Remember, the limit definition is that for uh, every epsilon, there exists um, n uh, such that uh, a n uh, minus l is less than epsilon uh, for all n uh, bigger than n. Um, okay, so fix epsilon. Uh, then by the uh, epsilon definition of the soup, uh, 
uh, of soup. Um, there exists a, um, an element a and epsilon in S um, such that um, L minus epsilon is strictly less than A and epsilon, which is uh, less, than, less or equal than uh, L. So, any questions? Okay. Uh, right. <clears throat> um, right, but we have monotonicity, but by uh, uh, monotonicity, uh, this is the same as L minus epsilon is less than A and epsilon, um, which is less than um, A n, uh, which is less than L for all n bigger than n epsilon. And um, that's it. So we showed that um, we showed the following. We showed that this is less than L A minus A n uh, less than epsilon uh, for all n bigger than an epsilon, uh, which is just the limit definition. Okay. Uh, for the decreasing case, so yeah, is that okay? For the uh, decreasing, uh, let uh, Bn to be minus An, and I repeat the proof, the above proof. All right, so let's do an example. So the, the sequence E minus E N square um, is uh, decreasing monotonically to, uh, to zero. So if you like, this is one, two, and um, this is e minus n square. Okay. Um, and uh, is bounded below by zero. And is uh, bounded below by zero. Um, so by uh, MCT, um, AN converges to some number L. So AN for, for some L. But yeah, we can see that this is just the infimum. So AM will just converge to the. So if we repeat the proof, we know more. We know that in fact AN converges to the infimum. 
Uh, we'll just say zero. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. Um, so a more general fact is uh, if a n uh, is of the form uh, f of n, uh, where yeah f of x is bounded above. And uh, is uh, monotonically decreasing, uh, increasing. Uh, meaning that, uh, yeah, so f of x uh, is less than f of y. Or um, more weakly, uh, you know, um, f prime of x uh, is positive if you're differentiable. In that case, then uh, by MCT, uh, the limit of uh, an exists. So All right, uh, so here's another theorem from the book. Uh, it's called the uh, nested intervals. Suppose that uh, you have a collection of intervals. Uh, our intervals um, A and B and uh, that are nested, uh, meaning um, I n plus one is within I n. So this is um, A n B n. And then somewhere inside you have uh, the next guy. Right, and they're non empty. So non empty. Uh, let me write this. Non empty just means um, um, A n is not B n. Uh, then, if you uh, intersect them, so then um, their intersection. It's not empty. Meaning, um, you know, I1 intersect I2 intersect so on uh, is not empty. So you have all these intervals. And then as you keep going, uh, there's a limit. Not empty. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
maybe I should do a simple example first. Uh, you know, uh, let uh, I N equal uh, zero plus uh, one plus one over N. Uh, so that's that. These are nested. And uh, their intersection. Is equal to a zero one. Can the intervals be open? Uh, no. So let me do an example. Um, yeah. Why um, uh, open? Why uh, why closed? Um, so take um, same guy, but open. Let me see, I have to think. Yeah, let me uh, let me think about it. Um, I have to think about this. I want to give you a good example. Um, yes, I have to think about it. I can't just uh, come up with it. Okay. So yeah, let me. I will put it in the notes. Yeah, you get the ends. That's right. Yes. So, yeah, that example is better. Thank you. I put minus one over and but that wasn't good. Yes, that's exactly right. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, why um, why closed? Indeed, I take. Uh, Open zero and one over n. Um, if you intersect them, yeah, going up to n uh, is equal to zero one over n. And then if you take limits. Uh, you get the empty set here, and here you get the, the whole thing. Yes. Thank you, Eric. The sequences um, a n and uh, and the b n um, are bounded uh, above and below. Uh, 
um, uh, by uh, the biggest interval, uh, I1, meaning uh, uh, An uh, is a lower bound and B1 is the upper bound. Um, right. So by um, by LUB, right? Okay. So you have this, uh, but there also um, we, we will apply MCT here. Uh, why is that? Uh, by nestedness. Um, of intervals. Uh, we get um, a n is um, less than or equal to a n plus one and uh, b n plus one is less than or equal than b n. So the picture is a n a n plus one, b n plus one, b n. So it goes this way, it goes that way. So now we have the two conditions. We have the, the bounded above and below, and uh, we have the uh, monotonicity. So MCT says that uh, a n converges to some limit L1 and uh, uh, Bn to some limit L2. Okay. We, why is it A n? Why do we need to express? I'm just proving it, uh, LeBron. I'm proving why is it uh, empty. That's right. Yeah, we want them to be non empty. Yeah, okay. So, what's the question? Why do we need to express as a limit of big N? Uh, let me go back. So, here I'm proving. Uh, so, why is this empty? Uh, use um, a limit definition. Um, um, since uh, one over n converges to zero, and uh, and zero is not in the set, so this requires proof. Uh, it, it's tricky. So why is this true? Try to prove it. And. Uh, this inequality, indeed, this is because they're not empty. Okay, okay, good. Uh, okay, good, thank you. Right, uh, uh, claim, claim. Uh, L1 and L2 are in the intersection. And so, and so it's not in, so, and that will prove it. So, you know, right, and it's not in. I don't like the way I wrote it. So, Uh, and so, um, uh, 
is non empty. Okay. Yeah, so we, we prove this by contradiction. Um, suppose proof by contradiction. Suppose not, suppose uh, uh, L1 and L2 are not in it. Well, I just need to do one of them. I don't have to do both. So suppose, uh, yeah, suppose L1 uh, is not in here. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, that means that uh, there exists uh, N uh, such that uh, L1 is not in I N. Uh, why is that? Because if it's not in the intersection, it, uh, it, it must not be in one of them. So if it was in all of them, it would be in it. So there exists at least one, call it I N, so that L1 is outside. So it's not in here. If it was in, in for every N, it would be in the intersection. So, so there exists at least one, so that it's not in. Um, but uh, by nestedness, L1 not in I n uh, means that um, L1 is not in I n plus one, which contains um, I n plus two, and so on. Uh, which means that L1 is not in I n uh, for all n bigger than n. If A n is still non empty. No, if the endpoints, right. So, yeah, we mean non empty interior. Um, but um, let me see. So yeah, now that I look at it, we don't actually need it. Um, that's a good question, Nick. Um, that's right. No, you're you're right. You're right. We don't actually need it. Um, they can be equal. So let me uh, let me add this. Um, that's a good point. Um, uh, if um, if a n is equal to b n, then uh, i n would just be a singleton, and the same proof follows. So we we, we don't actually need. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, I will add that uh, you don't need um, strict inequality. Nick, is that okay? Nick? Does it have to be closed? Yeah, that's the main thing. So it has to be closed. Otherwise, we gave an example where if you have open, um, the limit is empty. So Shirley asks, does it have to be closed on both sides? And the answer is uh, yes. Because of the example we gave about Good. Okay, so here uh, this will give um, a contradiction. Um, so let me see. Um, since um, uh, I n is closed. 
uh, there exists um, epsilon naught so that uh, L1 minus elements from um, IN are bigger or equal than epsilon naught. So this is the picture. This is AN, this is BN. Suppose L1 is here, uh, this is a epsilon naught. Okay, so there's a positive distance. If there was no positive distance, then uh, if epsilon naught was zero, we will get L1 equal to AN, uh, which is a contradiction. Uh, which contradicts uh, not in okay so we're almost there um okay uh, but uh a n converges to L, uh, which means what? Uh, so take, so for epsilon, I don't know, equal to um, epsilon naught over two, uh, you get sum n, uh, there exists uh, n tilde bigger than n, so that um, for all n bigger than n tilde, um, L1 minus a n uh, is less than epsilon, this is epsilon over two. And um, this contradicts This contradicts the following. So we show that uh, L1 falls outside I n for all n bigger than n. But then you're telling me that the endpoints um, are epsilon close. And so that's the contradiction. So what you showed is um, epsilon naught over two uh, is bigger than L1 minus AN, which is bigger than epsilon naught. So you got one half bigger than one. Any questions? Solid B I N plus one contained in I N minus one. It's contained in in I N. Did I write something else? Yeah, I'm not sure, but. Um, yeah, uh, Levon, that's exactly it. Did I write something else? Yeah, like uh, inside here you have I n plus one, I n plus two. That's right. Levon? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Good. All right. Uh, so let's do a 
one example from the book. So, OK. Um, suppose you have the recursion. So you have a sequence. An um, satisfies uh, An plus one five plus An, and it starts from An equal to zero. Uh, want to show. An converges to L, uh, where L is the solution to uh, this quadratic equation. And you can find it. I, I, I think it was like um, one. Okay, let me. I don't remember exactly the solution. Um, I think it was like plus minus square root two or something, square root three. We know a n is in, uh, so a n is the end point, uh, Bing Yao. So how do we know a n is in the interval i n? A n is just the left end point. By definition. Um, right, so we want to apply MCT. So we want to apply, want to apply uh, MCT. We need two things. We need uh, we need uh, bounded plus uh, monotonicity. So let's start with uh, monotonicity. I want to show uh, that this is less than, that a n is less than uh, a n plus one, uh, which is less than three. So we have um, increasing and uh, we have bounded above. So then we can apply um, MCT. Right, so let's see. Uh, we'll prove this by induction. Uh, the base case is easy, so base case. Um, we have um, uh, A0 is 0, so that's fine. Uh, then we have that A1 is equal to square root 5 plus A0, which is uh, square root 5 plus 0, uh, which is like 2.3 something. I don't remember exactly, but it was uh, less than three. So that's the base case. Now I do inductive hypothesis. Meaning uh, you assume Pn and you want to prove Pn plus one. So um, assume um, that uh, you know, zero a n minus one is less than a n is less than three. Prove it for next. Prove it for n plus one.
let me just write it. So, um, good. So, a n plus one is equal to square root five plus uh, um, a n. Uh, by the inductive hypothesis, uh, this is less than a n minus one. But then by definition, this is uh, a n. So that's good. And then, uh, uh, what's that? And then for the upper bound, Uh, this is less than um, square root 5 plus 3, uh, which is square root 8. So 2 square root 2. And uh, you get the same, um, same one. We know. Yeah, we're proving it. Uh, we prove that it's bound by three. Oh, you mean for the base case or? For the base case is this, and then we use the inductive hypothesis to, uh, to get this. Yeah, so we're doing, uh, I don't think I'm, I mean, the. How do we find the three? Well, I mean, first of all, three is not sharp. So that's one thing. And uh, how we figure out the three is that we put, uh, we know A0. So we have A1 is equal to this. And then this is A0, right? which is square root five, and you can compute this. This is like 2.3, which is less than three. So that's how we've, so the three uh, came from the base case. Yeah, it could even be bigger. Like, it's an educated guess. That's right. So we just made an educated guess. You can have five or four. Uh, MCT just says bounded above. It doesn't have to be a special bound. Xin uh, Yu, is that okay? So any bound will okay. Right. Uh, so MCT tells you, um, says uh, that AN converges to L uh, for some L. Um, so now here is tricky, right? It's not easy to find the infimo. So here is tricky. Uh, uh, it is um, tricky to find uh, uh, the um, the supremum of a n. Uh, but what saves us? Uh, well, we can use the recursion, but uh, we know um, a n is equal to. Uh, a n plus one is equal to uh, square root five plus a n. Now take limits of both sides. So, so take limit.
And that tells you why. It tells you that L is equal to square root 5 of 5 plus L. The last step will it be. No, we, we want a uniform bound. So that's right. Yeah, since it's less than. Yeah, but then we, we need. We're trying to prove. Um, so the question is, uh, what's the upper bound? Uh, we're trying to prove this. Uh, we're trying to prove this for all. Who's going to Yeah, we're trying to prove this for all um, for all n. Okay. All right, so let's take a small break, five uh, to ten minutes, and then I'll start again uh, with uh, subsequences. So I'll stay here for questions, but uh, feel free to walk around. Something. So I'll be back in five to ten minutes. So I'll be here, but you can uh, can do your stuff. So I can answer questions or anything you like. Right. Um, do we have office hours this week? So I need more. Uh, only six people um, um, went to uh, Survey Monkey to answer. So I'm waiting for more people to uh, to tell me their availability, and then we'll have office hours. Um, definitely next week. Uh, But since your homework is due this week, I should have some office hour. Yeah, I was going to say. So since we have a homework this week, I should have some office hour. Um, so I mean, I'll, I'll go check what happened at Survey Monkey, how many people answered, and we'll have a temporary one this week. And I'll wait for more people, then we'll change it back next week because I want to get more people uh, to reply. So this week, yes, uh, we need to have an office hour. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll announce one soon once I see the feedback from the survey for this week. Is that okay, Levon? So wait, uh, there was another question. Uh, proposition 2.8. Well, I don't know. I mean, um, you know, feel free to post on Piazza. I'm, I'm sure other, uh, Bing Yao, um, I'm sure other students can help too. It's not a very difficult proof. Um, so post your question on Piazza, and if no one answers, um, I'll, I'll come answer as well. Uh, Bin Yao? Yeah. It's not very difficult. Uh, if you have a particular question, you can let me know. Um, uh, we are learning. That's right, dedicant is an alternative proof. Um, I'm following uh, Terence Tao and the textbook. Um, so, and 
the reason is because Cauchy sequences is actually more used than Dedekind cuts. So if you end up going more into math, uh, you will see Cauchy sequences more often. Yeah, there are different things. That's right. Can we use 2.8? Yes, there are two alternative ways to construct them. That's right. So, uh, no, I, I would like you to uh, to use, uh, to prove. Um, uh, so, yeah, don't use proposition 2.8. Um, as I want you to see if you can write down the argument. Part of the, part of the homework exercise is for you to rewrite the proof um, to make sure you understand it. So, and it's not that long, it's a uh, two line. So you can write down the proof, make sure you understand it. So yeah, do not use the 2.8 directly. Try to write it down and see if you understand it. Yeah. Use, no, no, I mean, the question is to prove that, right? Um, so you are, are we allowed to use the density of the rationals to prove the density of the irrational? So no, you have to, uh, that's part of the homework question. You have to prove that they're dense. Meaning that you can approximate by terminating and, um, and uh, repeating uh, decimals. Is that okay, Danny? Oh, for problem, oh, I'm sorry, yes. Sorry, sorry, for question two, but can we use question one? To, yeah, yeah, of course, yes. Within the homework, you can use questions, but not, um, not otherwise. Uh, when do quizzes get released each week? So, uh, you have a calendar the you can see all i'm not sure what you're able to see but uh it should say i think it's on thursdays that we release it and it's due on sunday joseph so um it's like four days yeah but i'll check yeah it's always on thursdays
right. Is it better? A uh, quirk quest. Always use a uh, quirk quest for emails. And uh, because I'm getting some repeated emails, sometimes I just um, make an announcement. Because um, I, I usually get uh, repeated emails, uh, same question from uh, different students. So, oh, yeah, on syllabus, yeah, I say to use the. Um, the Quirkus. Between the homework. I don't know what you mean. It's the same thing. Like uh, Sometimes I use, no, like, I mean, I don't know, it's not, um, there is no distinction. Yeah, they're all great, that's right, exactly. Shrap, yes, okay, good. All right. Subsequences. Right. Um, so here's a simple example. Um, uh, Suppose uh, you have the sequence. Uh, the following, so 1.1, 0.1, .1, 0.2, 0.3, Yeah, um, 1.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, and so on. Um, so let me plot this. Um, it's kind of weird. So. This is a 1.1, this is one, this is zero, and uh, it goes like this. So this is one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. And then um, we have another one from 0 0.1, goes down like this. Um, so this is AM. Okay. So clearly, uh, so clearly, uh, AN, um, doesn't have a limit. Right, so uh, because it alternates, uh, it keeps alternating uh, uh, between uh, uh, zero and one. Uh, uh, but it has convergent uh, subsequences. Uh, 
but uh, the uh, the sequence is um, one 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 zero one. So this is a BN and this is CN. Uh, they converge to uh, uh, to one and zero, and uh, these are uh, sequences are um, are sub sequences. Uh, of a n. So we have that B n are um, the odd multiples, and uh, C n are the even ones. So odd, even. So A two n plus one goes to one, and A n, um, A two n that uh, goes to zero. But um, a n does not converge. Is that OK? Can I write the decimal expansion? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, in the book as well. Yeah, sure. It's the same thing. It's, there's no difference. Are we counting zero, one, two? Let's see. No, we're counting. Um, yeah, that's important, right? So here we mean. Um, so this is a one, this is uh, a two, this is a three. Start from one. Chen Li, is that okay? In that case, B n should be bounded by B by two n minus one. Am I saying something? Okay, let me see. Maybe I'm making a mistake. Let me see. Uh, what do I want to say? Um, two plus one. So yeah, let me make it clear what we mean here. So, uh, so this is for n. Um, how do you say this? So this is zero. So b n starts from zero. And uh, CN starts from one. Yeah. Because then you get um, one, a two, one plus one, which is three and then a5 and so on and then this gives um, a2 times 1 a2 times 2 a6 um,
So definition uh, is subsequence. of um, a n is a uh, sequence uh, a n k k one uh, with uh, a n one a n two a n three so on. And we have N1 is less than N2, less than N3, uh, and so on. Okay. All right, so now we'll prove um, the main theorem. 4.7, uh, Bolzano, uh, via stress. Every, um, bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. Okay. So remark, um, what are we saying here? Um, MCT says um, that uh, bounded plus monotone, so above uh, increasing, uh, gives a limit convergence. Um, uh, Bolzano says uh, bounded above and below. Uh, implies convergent subsequence. So this is a more uh, general result. It's more general. Or general assumption. but weaker conclusion. Because as you see above, uh, because as in the example, uh, AN, yeah, the mother sequence AN, uh, even though bounded, it might not uh, converge. Um, 
I don't know. Another more simple example is um, a n equal to minus one to the n. So again, this is a. Uh, it keeps jumping back and forth. And uh, a two n plus one is minus one. A two n is one. So this converge, but um, the mother sequence does not. Good. So let's prove this. So again, we want to prove that every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. So we'll use um, MCT and um, nested interval. I'll split this in steps. Um, we have bounded. And so um, S, uh, the uh, subsequence uh, is contained Um, in this interval. I call this um, I0. Um, next, uh, split. I zero into uh, two uh, half intervals. So minus M and uh, zero and uh, zero and uh, M. Uh, uh, let um, I one be the half that contains infinitely many of um, AN. So what's the picture? You split it, and now in at least one of them, uh, infinitely many of AN will be inside. So let's say they're here. You could have them in here too, but at least in one of them, uh, there's infinitely many of them. Okay. Good. Um, so, yes. Um, Call that sequence, uh, call that uh, subsequence. Uh, B1K.
So if we go back to the example, what we did here is, um, you know, we had uh, these guys and we had these guys, uh, 0 0.1, 1.1, and uh, I will just pick one of the intervals. So, so, so back to the example. Um, M is, um, we can make it uh, i make it how I want. I want to split it here. I'll make M is 2. So we have 2 and then the right. OK, good. So take a I0 to be 0, 2. And then um, take I1 to be um, 0, 1 because uh, it contains uh, infinitely many uh, points of um, a n, uh, uh, namely Uh, zero one, zero zero one, so on. Do we have? No, you can split. The question is, do we have to split the interval in the middle? Uh, the question is, um, uh, no. You can split it um, any way you like. Uh, don't both intervals? That's right. Yeah, they they contain uh, infinitely many points. So I one contains of both. Um, but I'm just seeing what my first choice is. Then as we go deeper, yeah, as we go deeper, um, the upper sequence will disappear. Very good point. So the question is, don't both intervals contain infinitely many points? Yes, uh, that's in I, I0, in I1, yeah. Now I2, they will uh, disappear. Um, continue this process. Uh, to get um, nested uh, sequence, um, nested um, closed intervals. Uh, I n plus one, I n, I zero. Right. And uh, right. And uh, yeah, and, and each one of them. So, um, uh, let me say this. And um, B and K is contained in the I N and uh, and um, is the uh, subsequence. Uh, in uh, I N. Uh, I know these are also satisfying uh, monotonicity too, but we don't need it. So, and, uh, okay. So, but the lengths are uh, decreasing. You know, so let me start one second. So, so by the nested intervals lemma, um, 
the uh, the intersection is not empty. Uh, meaning, i.e., uh, there exists uh, there exists. Um, L inside uh, inside that intersection. Uh, but the uh, the lengths are uh, decreasing. Are decreasing. Why is that? So we have i n plus one uh, is less than i n over two, and uh, so on, till you get uh, i zero over um, two to the uh, n plus one, uh, which is m over two to the n. OK, um, so what does that tell us? So that tells us that so since. Um, L is in I N plus one. And. Uh, B N plus one K. Is in. Um, uh, in I N plus one. Uh, we get. Uh, L minus BN plus one uh, is less than one, um, less than M two to the N. Okay. Good. So we're almost there. Uh, so. Uh, want to show uh, that um, BN, BN, the diagonal sequence, uh, converges to um, I want to show, let me see. Yeah, I'll call it uh, too many notations. I want to show A and K converges to L for some uh, N K subsequence. Um, fix um, epsilon positive. Um, then um, choose um, N large enough um, large enough so that Um, M over two to the N is less than epsilon. All right, so from star, um, we get um, L minus um, BN one 
uh, is less than one um, m two to the n, uh, which is less than m two capital N, uh, which is less than epsilon. Okay, and uh, b one n is uh, so the subsequence. So the subsequence. Uh, will be uh, Bn1 um, for n starting from 1 to infinity. Is that okay? Right. So that's it. Okay. Mm. All right, so let's do a, let's do an example. If you have any questions, just let me know. What is capital M? Good. Yeah, I can make a concrete choice. So um, let me see. Uh, I have to solve this equation. So M over epsilon uh, log two is less than n. Okay. So so let um, n to be um, the log two of m over epsilon uh, plus one. Bisman, is that okay? Bisman. Uh, why is it n instead of n plus 1 for the subsequence? Why is it n instead of n plus 1? I see. No, yes, yes, you're right. Uh, by star is n plus 1. Thank you, um, Levon. Thank you. That's a very good point. Yes. Levon, is that okay? Thank you. All right. So, so example 4.8, 2.7.i. Okay. So I'll state the question. It says, uh, suppose you have a sequence. Is a sequence uh, in R uh, with the following property. So and. Um, LK converge to L, some L. Okay, let me say a different way. So, and, uh, and uh, LK um, such that uh, LK goes to L. Suppose they have the following property. Um, if uh, for each uh, k, uh, we have a subsequence. There is a, There is a uh, subsequence um, uh, of xn. I want to write this nice. Yeah, so 
There is some subsequence K of N. Uh, that converges to LK. Okay. Uh, show uh, that there exists. subsequence um, of Xn, I don't know, uh, Bn, um, such that uh, uh, Bn, the limit, converges to L, okay? So you have L key and you get a further subsequence L. So let me draw a picture. Um, so you have X, one, one, X, one, two, X, one, three, converges to L, one. Then X, uh, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, Converges to L2. X31322. Three, 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 L3. So this is um, the K equal one, K equal two, K equal three. Okay. Um, and then we know that this guy is on the right, converge to L. And our job is to figure out some subsequence um, some uh, subsequence, not necessarily the diagonal. I don't want to write diagonal. Could be something else. Um, that converges to L, okay? So that's the idea of the proof. So you have all these subsequences converging this way, and then you can find a guy that converges uh, to L. This is called the Cantor uh, diagonalization argument. All right. What's the strategy? Uh, the strategy is um, for each K, to pick um, an element uh, X, K, and K that is uh, close to uh, LK. And then show that they converge uh, to L. All right. Good. All right, let's start. So for k equal one, uh, by the limit definition, by the um, xn
for um, epsilon equal to one over two, uh, there exists n one such that um, x one n minus l one uh, is less than um, epsilon for all n bigger than n one. Okay. So the picture is uh, you have x11, x12, x13, so on. They converge to L1 and you pick the tail. That is, uh, that satisfies, that is one half close. Right. Um, so same uh, by the limit x two and l two for epsilon equal to one over two to the two. Uh, there exists n two such that x two n minus l two is less than one fourth uh, for all uh, n two bigger than uh, n for all n bigger than n two bigger than n one. So let me draw the picture. Uh, x one one, x one two, x one three, so on. We form the tail goes to a one. X two one, X two two, X two three. And then we pick a further tail. So X uh, two and two. Okay. Is that okay? Okay, uh, I think you get the main idea. Uh, for the M step, um, uh, by a limit of N goes to infinity of X, M, N. Uh, for um, epsilon equal to one over two to the N. Uh, there exists nm bigger than nm minus one, such that uh, x uh, m n minus l m is less than epsilon one over two to the m for all n bigger than or equal to uh, nm. Uh, claim. Uh, claim. Um, a uh, of m defined as x m n m is the desired subsequence. Uh, subsequence. Uh, what do we mean by that? I mean, it's the sequence uh, converging to L. Okay. 
right? So uh, fix epsilon as usual when you want to prove limits. Since uh, Lm converges to L, you can find there exists Um, let me call it uh, N0. N0 are uh, large enough um, so that LM minus L is less than uh, epsilon over 2 uh, for all N bigger than um, N0. Um, good. So that's one. And then second, um, pick uh, N epsilon over two um, large enough. So large enough um, so that uh, one over two and epsilon over two um, is less than epsilon over two. Okay. All right. So, together, by taking M to be the maximum of the two, so take M to be bigger than both, uh, we find The following. So first you do triangle inequality. Let me do the middle step. So you uh, you subtract and add um, LM. So. Add and subtract. Then I uh, use triangle. Then use a triangle uh, inequality. Get this. All right, so for this guy, we have from above uh, that this is less than epsilon over 2, and uh, this guy is less than uh, 1 over uh, 2 to the m. Okay. okay, so what do we have here? We have 1 over 2 to the m plus epsilon over 2. By monotonicity, this is less than 2 to the n epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2. And I think you understand uh, this is less than epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which is just uh, epsilon. So let me repeat. Um, so. So here uh, we use the definition AM equal to um, XM NM. Uh, 
um, here we used uh, M is bigger than N epsilon over two. Um, here we use the definition of N epsilon. And then we get uh, epsilon. How did you pick epsilon one over two and so on to verify the sequence? So how do I pick epsilon? Yeah. So. So the pattern is we want. Uh, the pattern is we want this upper bound. To uh, to go to zero. So. The base case is uh, one over two. Then um, next step is one over two to the two. And so here um, we have that this bound goes to zero as M goes to uh, infinity. So there is nothing special on how we choose epsilon. Uh, you just need something that goes to zero. So. Let me write this. So. So remark. Um, uh, this. Uh, any choice. Of epsilon M going to zero. Uh, will have worked. Uh, we picked um, epsilon m e equal to one over two to the m, uh, just by due to the monotonicity. Due to uh, monotonicity. But there's nothing special about it. Uh, another choice. Uh, Another choice is um, EM equal to one over M. So there's nothing special uh, about that. Uh, binging, is that okay? I mean, uh, the class is over, so I will just keep answering questions because uh, I see the clock is one. So I will just stay here and keep answering questions. Um, okay. Uh, to verify the sequence composing of the tails of the initial subsequences. Yeah. So, Danny, that's a very good question, and that's why we. Uh, This is very important. That's why we, we picked uh, NM to be bigger than NM minus one to have uh, nested uh, sequence, subsequences. Uh, Danny, is that okay? Yeah. Uh, could you please clarify what AM is. I don't understand. Yeah. Good. Um, so. Good. So from the M step, um, we got this statement, right? And this is true for all n, including the um, including uh, n m. So, um, so let me write it here. This is also true for n m. Right. So. Uh, Bisman, 
Is that okay? Okay, let me see. What else can I say? Um, maybe I can go to the beginning. So, yeah, let me draw a picture again. Good. So, what happened? Um, so, we had some subsequences. We had x11, x12, um, x, uh, one, three, and so on. Um, and uh, it goes up to uh, x1, n1, x1, n1 plus one, and it goes to L1. And same. Um, we pick it further to the right. And uh, again, further to the right for the next guy. And uh, why do we pick these guys? Because like we said, uh, at the end step, uh, the distance. So this is LM and um, this is um, XM, NM. And then you have the other guys. Um, this distance here is one over two to the M. So they're very close to um, uh, I don't like this picture. Okay, well, let me do L1, I'll do L2. So for L2, the distance is one over four. And we're saying that uh, X2 and two is inside x2 and 2 plus 1 is also inside. Um, so, what else am I saying? And, yeah, so that we made a choice of a subsequence that uh, converges to the limit point of the limit points. L is the limit point of the limit points. Uh, LK. Uh, Okay, good. Good. So for Levon, when we pick the integer part A0, Yes, but why does this imply A0 is not an upper bound? Because uh, X0 is an element of um, of the set. Um, well, okay, let me say it differently. Um, right. No, uh, Levon, you're right. I, I used bad phrasing. So I should have said um, A0 is not necessarily the upper bound. It could be. It could be that X0 is the upper bound, but A0 might not be the upper bound. Uh, but A0 plus 1 is definitely an upper bound. So I'll, 
Okay, yeah, I will add this uh, word. It's not necessarily. Also, can we express L? Yeah, th that's how we defined L, exactly. Yeah, a L is equal to A0, A1, by, by Y. Uh, that, that's how we constructed L. That's our construction, and then we proved that uh, this construction works, meaning that it's a list up, it's a list upper bound. It's an upper bound and also satisfies the epsilon definition. Why can it be a limit? Why? Oh, uh, if you're, that's right. So to convince yourself for that, you can write it as a, uh, as a decimal series. And then you see that the decimal series converges because it's upper bounded by M. So the set M is upper bounded. So how do you say this? Yeah, let me write a little bit on this. So, uh, so LN is equal to, um, um, zero to N of uh, 10 to the K, but all these guys are bounded by uh, by M because the set, because S was bounded above. I will add this on the notes because that's a good point. I have to clarify this. So this was, uh, set was bounded above, so there is an M, so uh, if you like, uh, let me say this. Well, there's many ways to say this. So LN um, is less than, how do you say this? I mean, the question is, do you have LN going to L? Uh, because uh, L minus LN, you know, is equal to the subsequence, to the tail sequence, I mean. And uh, this is less than uh, nine. Um, ten plus one, uh, ten to the K. And this goes to a zero, to zero. Levon? Is that okay? Okay. Uh, Bin Yao, can we use that supremum of this? So, um, yeah, you should prove these things because uh, we still haven't. So we're learning supremum and infimum, we just defined it. So yeah, try it, um, write down carefully uh, the statements. Um, if they're in the book, copy the, what is it in the book? So um, I just want you to write down carefully uh, what you're working with uh, for practice. Bin Yao, is that okay? But you use the first one in the proof of 2.8. Right. Yeah, I will, um, yeah, well, right. So you have to prove it, that's true. But I will also go add that thing in 2.8. So you can copy it from there. Is that okay? Bing Yang? Bing Yang? Are you there? 
I will go write the proof for the soup equal to minus n. No, I, I know I didn't prove it, but I will go write it down in the notes. Yeah, I'll go write it down. Okay, anything else? Could you scroll to the end of the last? Sure, yeah. Uh, here? Yeah. I mean, the notes, we will upload them, so you don't have to write down anything. Um, all the notes are getting uploaded on Quarkus. Yeah, yeah, we always uh, upload them. All right, good. So if you don't have any questions, I'll uh, close it.